I guess six after. Let's get started. Welcome to to God's Anointed Hands Afternoon Service. I will be the one overseeing it this afternoon, Pastor Lyons. Um, we welcome you in the name of the Lord, and He's not just mine, but He is yours also. So we just glad to have you here to worship with us, to share with us, and to experience the Word of God. Amen. 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 Uh, Pastor Stevens, you want to you want to pray us in before I put on some music and then get to the word. Our Father, we try to heaven. <clears throat> Stevens, as we start this morning, I can hardly wait. He's promised me 
second part of that song. Amen. We welcome y'all to God's Anointed Hands afternoon service again. Um, and today, I would tell you there's no law about you using your Bible while we going through this message today. I would tell you that at any time that a, a pastor or minister or whomever gets in front of you, um, open your Bible up sometime just for you. I can say what I want to say if you don't open it up sometime. But I, I promise you, I won't give you something that ain't in the Word, but just for you. But today, today I would like to talk about the law. You know, if you don't follow the law, then 
that is really when you have problems with the law. But if you abide by the law, then you don't worry about the law because you already live in a state where the law, although out there, truly does not affect you. Because you are in the proper mindset and living where the law does not question you. It has no effect on you. Today's text comes from the book of Galatians and... I know y'all used to hearing the fruit of the Spirit, and that's where it's coming from, Galatians 5, 22 through 23. And it says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And, and as I read today's passage, we, we always look at the fruit part. We always look at the love, the joy, the peace, the long-suffering, the gentleness, the goodness, the faith, the meekness, and temperance. But what does against such there is no law mean? What does that truly say to us? And today we will only be looking at the B-side of verse 23, although I will take you down the rabbit hole with some of the fruit, we will be looking at the part of the verse that says, against such is no law. Yeah. And if I was to title today's message, it would be, no law needed. Yeah. See, there is a law, and we all know that, but there is no law for the fruit of the Spirit. Nowhere in the entire Bible will you see a verse that says, stop loving. Not only is it an attribute of God, but it is the greatest gift and action that we know of. There is never a time when we are to say to someone that I have stopped loving you because it will be the lasting action. And I didn't say last thing, but the lasting thing to stand in the end. Okay. If you look at 1 Corinthians 13 and 13, it says, And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Do you think that the God of love would have a law that says stop loving when we know that love forgives a multitude of sins and the Lord himself is love? Was there a law for the demonstration of his great love for us? And if the Lord can demonstrate this great love, and he did, then why would there be a law for us not to love? See, when you walk in Christ, you are marked by love. And how can there be a law that stops love? Or that stops who God truly is? There are none. And try it sometime if you're crazy. Put, just pull love out of your household and see the calamity that arises. See, love brings things together, and for the rest of the fruit to go, love has to start it off. See, there, there's no law. And this, this law that is not there is, is not just for love, but just look at this outstanding love that's out there. Man. That the Lord has sacrificed, John 3.16, we all know, but... Can you imagine the sacrifice of coming from up high, down low? Come on, there is no law. And, and we'll go through the law part, but let, let's, let's mess with some of these fruits a little bit. Because it says yeah. joy is next. And this joy comes after this love. So you must have love to have the joy. And, and this is not a joy that man or woman or the devil can give you or take from you. And there is a law against the joy that you receive from abiding in Christ Jesus. There's no law like that. 
If, if you look at John 15, 10 and 11, it says, If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. See, see, this even says to keep my commands and then there's love. And then there is that joy that is given to you by Jesus. You get two loves because you get the fathers and you get the sons. And some joy afterwards. And why wouldn't you have it after you receive love from both? Oh, I. And the keeping my commands part, the law is important. But as we delve further into this, you will see that why there is no law needed when you have this joy. See, the, the joy is on you, and it doesn't say don't have joy because it tells you that joy is truly trusting in God, and that means even in mourning and sorrow because both of them turn into joyful dancing when you trust God. See, the fact of the matter is that we are to be joyful in all that we do. And in all that happens to us, I hate to tell you this, and I love to tell you this. Even when I'm suffering and my emotions are on high and things ain't going my way, and I'm not meeting my worldly obligations, I am supposed to be joyful in the Lord. Why would not be? If you read Romans 5, 3 through 5, it says, Not only so. But we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character. And character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. So no matter what's going on, no matter what the problem is, as long as I got God's love and the Holy Spirit, joy. I got joy. See, in our suffering and in all these things, we are to rejoice and give thanks in all of our circumstances because the Lord says to do that. It's, it's not a question. It's not a, you do it if you want to. He says to do that. Yes, that is the will of God for us through Jesus Christ. So there is no law needed. And you're going to hear that, but boy, we're going to understand it a little more a little later. See, I, I could boggle you down with scripture that tells you about what the Lord says about the fruit of the Spirit and what Paul addresses here. Because he goes into long suffering, and that is simply having the first three while going through something for a while. See, the, the Lord put these in the order that they were supposed to go into. See, the devil doesn't attack us in a short game. Don't be fooled. Satan ain't just doing sprints with you. He runs a marathon with us. And, and, and he runs it well, right next to you. But think about how the Lord has run the marathon waiting on you. And he is been next to you the entire time, how he has called to you and you haven't turned to him and he still runs next to you waiting for you. Where you at? See, it, it, it speaks to how the Lord has been with us from day one. And can you manage this long suffering in your life? If you turn to him, you can. If God is long-suffering, then do you think that there is a law that says his disciples should not be long-suffering? Look for a verse in the Bible that says we should not be long-suffering or that we should be quick to or impatient. If you can't find it, then there is no law needed. See, if the Lord was not gentle with us, if he did not take time to teach us the word, if he did not tell us that he wanted to be our God, even when our necks were stiff and our hearts were hardened and we turned away from him, 
If he wasn't long suffering, then where would we be? He didn't approach us with do this now. He gave us a choice to love him and he was gentle about it. Even in our discretion, even in captivity, the Lord was still waiting for us to get right. He has showed us so much kindness that we should be kind to everyone else just because he has looked on low and saw these failures and unfaithful and still shown us grace and mercy and salvation. God's kindness does not fade. If you look at Isaiah 54 and 8, it says, In a surge of anger, I hid my face from you for a moment. But with everlasting kindness, I will have compassion on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. See, if, if my Father has an everlasting kindness, then I prayerfully should at least make it to the ever part of everlasting with my kindness. Yeah, I, I got to get in there somehow. If, if my Father presents kindness that is everlasting, then I should fight to present it also. See, there is no law needed for kindness. And goodness fits into this also. Goodness relates to qualities that go with the kindness. And there's no law against that. See, we must have faith. And we have faith because we have taken on what the Father has given us as a gift. And when, when is it ever wrong to have faith in God. You won't find it in this Bible. You buy a new car and you have faith that it will run. You pay the electric bill and you have faith the electricity will be on. And you paid for them. But you receive faith from the Lord so you should be able to keep faith. The faith is more dependable than your car and it has way more power than your electricity. I can't and you can't serve the Lord if we don't have faith. I can't even please the Lord if I don't have faith. So that excludes me. And, and, and let me reiterate, not having faith excludes me from helping my brothers and sisters. So having faith allows me to overcome the constant knocking of temptation at my door and to walk more closely with the Lord and his other children. In other words, I can't follow his commandment. Go out and make disciples. I can't love one another. I can't love him first. If I don't have his faith. Show me somewhere in the Bible where having faith in the Lord is against the law. And if not, then there is no need, no law needed. See, meekness and temperance are how my Savior walked around. My Savior, our Savior, was humble and gentle in all that he did. And this is a part of the clothing that should be under your armor. We spoke about this a few weeks ago. This is mandatory if you're going to put on the armor. Okay. So no meekness, then no armor. <laughs> See, we started off in love, and remember that love is, is not proud. Y'all know 1 Corinthians 13 and 4? Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. <laughs> See, we all should know who we are in Christ. And, and that does not put down our brothers and sisters ever. Christ didn't put them down. He lifted them up. He showed them a better way. And if you ain't lifting somebody up and showing them a better way, then you got a problem. And you may be under the law. See, we are truly humble servants that have work to do. And as Christ was about his father's business, that is the same thing that we should do. And bragging on the cross is the only thing that we should brag on. And, and knowing Christ, and knowing that Christ left glory to be with us, 
is what we should practice. And, and, and think about it if you want to think about how humble you should be. If the most high could come and serve the lowest, then that is what our mindset should be at all times. Yes, sir. We have to understand that in order for the spirit to work in us, then we have to have self-control in good and bad times. Uh -huh. Remember, rejoice. And if that is going on, then the spirit will work for us and others. Show me a verse anywhere in the Bible that doesn't want the Spirit to work in us and others. Show me a Bible verse where we should not be more Christ-like. And you can't, so there is no law needed. The fact is, I've been showing you what Paul was stating to them all along. And that is plain and simple. You have been changed by the Holy Spirit. And you are no longer under the law because you walk by the Spirit. It speaks of the fruit of the Spirit. There is no law against walking in the Spirit. And when you walk in the Spirit, there is no law needed because condemnation has no say-so when you do the works of the Lord. Your actions don't need the law because they are guided by the Holy Spirit. And you have sacrificed your flesh and given it to God and your spirit is on display. If you remember, we were talking about acts of the flesh. The acts of the flesh need the law because they are shortcomings. See, if the spirit reigns over you, if the spirit abides in you, then the law has no dominion over you. The acts of the flesh have a law because they go against God. They are the standards of the worldly ways and they are not acceptable in God's sight. But when you are led around by the Holy Spirit, then the law has no sting, no dominance, or no power over you. There is no condemnation of the law. We have the fruit of the Spirit and we have had our hearts changed and our minds renewed. There has been a transformation that has happened where we have given into the spirit and let go of the flesh and the flesh is what condemns you to the law. Why do I need to worry about the law when I have a righteous standing before the Lord? Is there a law against doing God's will? Look at your commandments. I bet you none of them say anything about doing God's will. Because I know there's a few when you don't do God's will. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Come on. Is there a time when the Lord will say, stop acting like Jesus? Because he wants us to act more like Jesus. And the law is for when you don't act like Jesus. Y'all know your parents might have said to you, you better get your get right on. They never say go act a fool. The Lord is telling you, act like Jesus, you won't be under the law. Uh -huh. See, we know that Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness. And as he was tested, he was in his fruit. And there was no law. And you and I are led into the wilderness daily by the Holy Spirit. And if you are guided by the Holy Spirit then you do not have to worry about the acts of the flesh because you are in the fruit and working in the spirit. But please understand the Holy Spirit is still leading you. And, and if he is driving your bus, then you better ask, if he is not driving your bus, then you better ask for a new driver. Because as long as you're walking in the spirit, there is no law needed. Because our lives have changed. Our ways have changed. Our mindsets have changed. We don't go to sin. We fight from sin. We give into the ways of the Lord and not the ways of the world. And my ways will continue to change as I grow in the spirit and and what you saw as shortcomings in the house I was in yesterday is not the house that I am in today because I have left that physical 
vessel there, and I am now walking with the Holy Spirit. I'm not stuck in the worldly ways. You saw shortcomings and condemnation of the flesh that stuck to the law is not now gone because I function with the Holy Spirit and the love of God. And is there any law that is needed when you are living as the Lord would have you live? Ask yourself that. Is there any law that would pertain to a righteous and faithful life because condemnation and adaptation don't go together? See, when you have accepted Jesus, you have been adopted into your life and the Holy Spirit resides in you. He drives your bus. Isn't this my true freedom from this world, from this condemnation as a disciple of Jesus, to not be under the law of condemnation, to know that there is no law needed because I live a life that the Lord has shown me how to live because I let him guide me and I stop trying to guide myself because I am a true child of God. See, the law can't condemn a person led by the Holy Spirit. If, if, you, if you don't believe me, look at Jesus in the wilderness. The law would have told him to, to take this, to do that, to say this. But he wasn't led by the law. He was led by the Holy Spirit. If you remember, it said the Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness, not the law. Whew. The law is not broken by those that have the fruit of the Spirit, which truly makes us free from condemnation of the law. Remember that the law condemns sin. And, and Paul is speaking to them that have given up sin, and that makes us free. And what are we free from? The condemnation of sin. So the acts of the flesh, which are standards measured for condemnation, are no longer on us. So there is no need for the law because it stands to have no power over us. It cannot harm us. It cannot stop us. It cannot prevent us. Because we are led by the Holy Spirit. So we are no longer slaves to sin. We are no longer the darkness where the spirit reigns is where we are. The law no longer has dominion where the spirit has power is where we are. The, the darkness, the, the bad parts of us, the fleshly parts of us no longer guide us. Because we have the spirit. And if that doesn't guide us, the flesh, the sin, the angers, then understand that the law has no need. There is no need for it. It has no strength. It has no power. And since that is true, then there is no law needed. In order for there to be no law needed, remember that the Holy Spirit must be in control. The Holy Spirit must be leading you into the wilderness just like it led Jesus into the wilderness. Just because Jesus' spirit was strong and his flesh was hungry, it didn't mean Jesus caved into the flesh. It just meant his spirit showed out. Just like when you get out there in that world and everything looks like your, your flesh is weak and you, you're having some problems that that spirit that's in you should say you got love in you. You got joy in you. You got peace in you. You know what long suffering is. You know what gentleness and goodness is. You know about faith and meekness and temperance. And if you still doing all of that and doing all these situations that the world will throw at you, there is no law that will condemn you for doing God's work. So there is no law needed. Amen. Amen. The floor is open.
you know, the Bible already tells you, you know, that, you know, that the righteous man will not under the law. That, hey, the law wasn't meant for us, no way. No way. If you are obedient to the law, you know, first you got to be obedient to the law. Can't break the law. <laughs> See, let me forget you about that. See, let me say 70, you can't jump out there with 80. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Great, great work, y'all. Uh, Keep down the line. Amen. Amen. Man. I enjoyed the message, Pastor Lang. All right, sister. Especially the one about love, because we know that that is the greatest, the greatest thing in the Bible is love. So I enjoyed that that part that that you teach it on love also. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, can't do it any other way. we missed your favorite sister is on oh okay what you got to say favorite sister such a blessing is because when you're already in God's will there's nothing that can condemn you nothing it's when we out of his will when we disobedient when we having our worldly ways and that's why acts of the flesh is right above this passage you can see we got some ways that are ungodly like or unchrist like and the Lord wants us to walk like Christ at all times and if we can do that I can't tell you how much better this world can be. We, Right now, we are fighting in a world that doesn't love, that doesn't know love. I just watched on television last night that the Republican Party is getting ready to stand up for Donald Trump for all the crimes that he did. How can you stand for wrong and then say we? that's because we want to go do right? And the world ain't going to see it. The world accepts some of the things that he did with no problem. The, the Lord tells you what it is. Now, you you may want to accept it or you may not. But he tells you, hey, this is wrong. 
and man knows it's wrong. So, if you walk in in the spirit and understand that fruit is singular, it's all together in order to be. You don't have to worry about the law. You're already doing God's will. And that's what true disciples, that's what we all should be striving to be, striving to do. Um, I want to close out by playing the other half of that song. Amen? Amen. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Y'all have a blessed week. Don't forget about the service at 6 o'clock tonight. If you're in Atlanta East, it is at 7 p.m. And we'll be on ready to share the word again. Amen. Amen. Amen.